everybody, it's Miss Carrie from the South Country Library with today's Friday story time. Um, the two books that I chose for today's story time is going to talk to us about kindness, sharing, friendship, and our feelings, um, which are very important. And the first book we're going to read is called Summer because we are in summer. Summer has began, begun, sorry. Summer, and this book is written by Chow Wexwan and illustrated by Yu Rong, and it is used with permission from Macmillan Publishing. In summer, the burning hot sun hangs in the sky. Let me just move that over. Sparrows hide in the willow trees, as does a cricket in the tall reeds. A frog floats on a lotus leaf beneath the umbrella of another. Ducks sleep with heads tucked in wings beneath the cool arching bridge. Hens doze in the dusty shade of haystacks and the melon farmer fans himself under a canopy. And by the riverbank, a girl fishes for her meal. In summer, the grasslands are parched. The animals seek shelter from the sun. Their, trump their trumpling feet stirring up a thick cloud of dust. Tree, the sharp-eyed jackal shrieks. The animals dash off as fast as they can in a mighty race to the shade of the tree. They're gonna try to cool down in the shade of the tree. I got to the tree first, said the elephant. No, I did, said the cheetah. It was me, said the jackal. I was here first, said the rhino. It was me, said the bear. And the smallest of them all, the field mouse, gets shoved aside. Her little voice tries to shout, but it was me, I got to the tree first. In summer, the tree is barely alive. Only a few leaves are hanging on. Most branches are completely bare with nothing growing from the twigs. The animals, the animals fight, turn, quarrel turns into a fight. The frightened field mouse dodges to the side, squeaking as loud as she can. Stop fighting, stop it. Do you think that they should be fighting? No, they should be sharing. The greedy elephant is so big, he takes the whole tree for himself. All the animals shout at him, no fair, we got here first. That's not very nice. The elephant gets angry and trumpets, go away, go away. No one wants to hear your squabbling on such a hot day. He sucks up dust with his trunk and blows it onto anyone who dares to disagree. Mm. They glare at the elephant. Suddenly the animals start to laugh one by one until they are all laughing. They finally see that under the, le under the leafless tree there is no shade. The elephant is sweltering in the sun, just like the rest of them. Ah, <gasps> look at this. They laugh until a scene unfolds before their eyes. A father and his son walk across the dry grassland together. The father's shadow completely covers the little boy. So what is cooling the little boy? The father's shadow. All the animals watch in silence as the father and son walk toward the horizon. As the pair gets farther and farther away, only the shape of the father can be seen. And then he too disappears. In the heat of the endless grassland, the animals are still. Sometime later, the lynx says, come here, little mouse, and rest in my shade. There's the little mouse. That's very kind, don't you think? Then the jackal goes to stand by the lynx. And what's happening? The shadow's getting, is the shadow getting smaller or getting bigger? Right, it is getting bigger. The leopard comes over, making more shade. Wow. Cool, dark air brought by the brown bear. Look at that. And the rhino casts an even bigger shadow. Look at that, they're all sharing. 
Flapping his large ears like fans, the elephant joins his companions at last, and then one tiny beetle scurries over to the field mouse. See the little tiny beetle right there? <laughs> In summer, the big sun burns bright until a cloud appears. It drifts over the animals on a journey across the empty sky. But in, will it drift away again? What do you think? It stays. In summer, all the friends cool off in the shade together. The end. I hope you like that story. It's all about sharing and caring and taking care of each other. And this next book is about our feelings, and it is called Fergal and the Bad Temper. What kind of animal is Fergal? Fergal, Fergal is a, what is he? He's a dragon. Let's see. And this book is by uh, Robert Starling, and it is used with permission from Macmillan Publishing. This is Fergal. What a nice dragon. He's a friendly little fellow. But when someone tells him what to do, Fergal gets very, very angry. Like when his dad said, Fergal, come down for your dinner. But Fergal wanted to keep playing. And then he said Fergal had to eat all his vegetables if he wanted dessert. Fergal felt fiery. It's not fair. I don't want to eat my greens. Oh no, what happened? <gasps> what do dragons spout from their mouth? Fire. So Fergal didn't get any dessert and he didn't get any dinner either. Fergal got in a pickle on the soccer field. You're goalkeeper, says the coach. Does it look like Fergal wants to be goalkeeper? I don't think so. It's not fair, said Fergal. I don't want to be the poof. Goalkeeper, uh-oh. His fiery temper got Fergal into trouble all over town. You have to wait for them to cool, Fergal. Foof. You have to miss a turn, Fergal. Scroof. Oh no, he's burning up everything. Whenever, wherever he went, Fergal just couldn't keep his cool. Finally, his friends had had enough. Everyone's ignoring me, Mom, said Fergal. It's not fair. Well, Fergal, dinner is in the trash, Bear's pastries are burned, and no one can play soccer, and that's not fair. We all get fiery, sighed Mom, but we have to find a way to cool down. My trick is to count to ten. So when the mom gets angry or upset or frustrated, what does she do? She counts to ten. The next day, Fergal felt fiery again. That's not, but then he remembered his mom's trick and he started to count. One, two, three, four, five. And he didn't feel so fiery. It had worked. Fergal noticed lots of animals had their own way to cool down. When Crow felt fiery, he told his friends about it. When Fox felt fiery, he watched the sunset. Wolf always found a nice quiet spot and made a big noise. Awoo! Cat lay back and had a really good stretch. And then there was hair whizzing about, stopped her feeling fiery in the first place. Now Fergal had lots of ways to cool down and when he didn't waste his fire on being angry, he found there were much more interesting things to do with it. Look, he's using his fire to lift the big balloon into the sky. The end. I hope you like my stories this week. Um, tune in on Monday with Miss Jen for story time and Friday again with Miss Carrie. I hope you guys have a great day and a great weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.